I mean, none of this work really is possible without the commitment of the patients who, to this trial. Um, it is quite heroic, some of the things that we ask patients to do. And the FDA then adds to that, that is we must follow patients for 15 years to prove that what we've done to the genetic change of, of, their, of their cells has not been deleterious. Um, Lorraine Leeds was our um, patient. He's become our friend. Um, he was very sick. Uh, he had failed his treatment, his chemotherapy, came to us quite sick. And he was one of the, he came at the time when insurance companies were fairly loath to, to touch these patients. Um, they were beginning to, to uh, give reimbursement. Um, but uh, he received, he was in the first cohort who received a, let's call it um, the um, Model A Ford variety of gene therapy. And uh, it didn't work genetically, but it certainly has worked uh, medically, and Lawrence has done very well. Uh, he's now 11 years after his transplant, and uh, he has a few words he'd like to share with us. Lauren is an artist. Uh, he works in tile and other uh, media, and uh, is really an outstanding person. Uh, Lauren, please come. <laughs> In June of 1998, I was, I was very, very ill. And after numerous tests, my doctor called me into his office and said, Loring, we finally know what's wrong with you. You have cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and you also have AIDS. I was immediately started on eight cycles of chemotherapy for the cancer and a very aggressive cocktail for the virus. But things would get worse before they would get better. I would spend the next three months in a delusional state. And then one day from the fourth and final stage of cancer, I started getting better. I began to come back. After five months, I was well enough to return home to Los Angeles. And my oncologist in LA, Dr. Deborah Villa, wanted to be my first appointment upon my return. She was very fond of me as I was of her. She hugged me, sat me down, and said, Loring, I have good news, and I have bad news. The good news is that you had a 50-50 chance of even getting into remission, and you did. The bad news is that it's usually short-lived, about six months. You might want to get your affairs in order. I asked what my options were. She said, well, when you relapse, and you will relapse, we can give you additional chemotherapy, but it may not be as effective this time around. And then, without speaking, she wrote down a name and a phone number on a scrap of paper and handed it to me and said, you might want to call this person. I did. And on the other end of the line was a doctor by the name of Amrita Krishnan at City of Hope. She invited me to meet with her and her associates, Dr. Zaya, Dr. Rossi, and others. They discussed with me the possibility of a transplant for the cancer, it being the best form of treatment for someone in my position. And then it dawned on me why my oncologist hadn't suggested it. The medical community at large didn't believe people with HIV and AIDS could benefit from a transplant, much less survive one. My oncologist was a member of that community after all. But as it turned out, she had done a residency with Dr. Krishnan at City of Hope. And she was aware of the work they were doing. And she believed it could help me. But she was prevented from formally suggesting it. City of Hope begged to differ with the medical community at large. They believed people with HIV and AIDS could benefit from a transplant. They believed they could survive it, and they were building their case. As if that wasn't enough, <clears throat> they told me about a ribozyme, a molecule they had designed to chop the virus in half, molecular scissors, if you will, to prevent its ability to replicate. Given that a transplant was the best treatment for me, this would also be an opportune time to treat some of my cells with this ribozyme. After being treated, these cells would be reinfused back into my body, and after they reproduced, we would know if the virus was still present. In essence, we would know if my own system could genetically fight the virus. 
Imagine that. My own body doing the work. All by itself. No more pills. Maybe one day something as simple as getting a shot was a lot to digest. Finally, I decided I would proceed with the transplant and I would participate in the research. I realized there are things in our lives of such great importance, it ceases being about any one individual. And this was one of those moments for me. I would proceed on all fronts. I had my transplant on July 30th, 1999 with both my own cells and my genetically modified cells. And I will never forget that moment. <clears throat> All of the doctors and scientists and nurses and staff were in my room. Gerhard Bauer, the scientist in charge of my treated cells at Los Angeles Children's Hospital, wouldn't entrust them to a courier. He personally delivered them. <laughs> and they all stood at the foot of my bed. And when the infusion began, there was a deafening silence. And I realized that that moment was the culmination of their life's work. The years of research, the months of preparation, all for that one brief moment, that moment that was so important to them, they all had to be present to witness it. Today, 10 years, 271 days since my transplant, the virus continues to be consistently characterized as undetectable and there is no presence of cancer. These people are the most dedicated, the most compassionate, the most passionate people I've ever met. They are visionaries. They are the best humanity has to offer. They are the best friend our community has. They are the best friend the world community has. I truly believe our best hope for better treatments and ultimately a cure will come from the hands and the hearts and the minds of these astonishing people, these people. One such offshoot is a case in point. Because of the research conducted by City of Hope and my participation in treatment, they have been able to continue on to transplant some 40 plus additional people who wouldn't have had the option because the research yielding overwhelmingly positive and indisputable results is now recognized by Medicare as accepted and standard treatment for cancer patients with HIV AIDS. These people are changing the world. They're, they're making a difference. The California Institute for Regenerative Medicine is making a difference. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity of spirit and for showing your support for the incredible work that is going on at City of Hope and with all the recipients. It's the stuff that science fiction is made of with one fundamental difference. It's no longer fiction. It's real. These people are real. The work they continue to do is real. I am, uh, I guess one of my greatest hopes for the future might best be summed up by an ABC News story which ran on December 11th, 2008. It reported on the recent findings of the HIV blocking properties of cells treated with proteins in five patients, concluding the latest round of research research City of Hope conducted and I participated in now more than a decade ago. Dr. Amrita Krishnan was noted saying in part, 
It's a way to use a patient's own stem cells to make them resistant to the virus that's already infected them. The reporter closed by saying that with additional research and development, Dr. Krishnan is hopeful, quote, genetic therapy for HIV could become a reality, end quote. I am privileged to know these people, these exceptional doctors, my doctors, Marina Krishnan, John Rossi, Dr. Zaya. I am humbled by you. But most of all, I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Now you know the definition of inspiration. Uh, <clears throat> it is uh, for these stories and this hope that uh, we all work together. Dr. Zay, if you'd come up and have the other members, Paula Cannon, the other members of your team that are here, and the patient, and Jeff. This is David D'Augusto, and David is in charge of process development. This is the person who figures out how to get these materials, these reagents, into the laboratory in a way that the FDA will approve of and get a cell product that actually works. And Paula Cannon is from USC, um, she's an associate professor there, and she is the person who convinces us all that it really is possible by showing the, the, the animal model. Uh, and um, Lauren, of course, you know, Lauren means Jeff. All right, uh, <clears throat> I think uh, we should uh, give a great hand to uh, Dr. Dale. Uh, truly inspired, let us go and adjourn to the board meeting. Thank you very much.